Good morning. Who knows the day and hour of Jesus' return? Well, we're looking at Mark 13, verse 32 to 37. Here's what it says. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Take heed, watch, and pray, for you do not know when the time is. It is like a man going to a far country who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to each his work and commanded the doorkeeper to watch. Watch, therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming, in the evening, at midnight, at the crowing of the rooster, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch. So when is Jesus coming? The Father knows. Jesus, before he came, before he took human, human form, he must have known. But when he took his humanity, he left behind that, that all-knowingness. He left it in the keeping of the Father. He himself says right here in our passage, he says he doesn't know when. And you know what? He didn't need to know when. What he needed to do was be faithful to God that day. He needed to be faithful to God's universe, God's kingdom, his plan, day by day by day. He didn't need to worry about that. He didn't need to obsess over that. Jesus did not stay up late at night drawing prophetic charts. He did not stay up late at night trying to figure out if, if uh, what was going to happen the next day. Now, we live at the end of time, and we should be aware of the things that are coming. We should be. So we're not against that at all. But what we're looking at here is a careful point from him. He wants us to watch. He wants us to be careful. We become very uh, distracted by so many pieces. Be that as it may, uh, sure, of course we're going to have some distracting things coming along. But we need to focus on the kingdom. We need to be right with God. And we need to let God keep his things and we keep our things. So Jesus did not worry about this. Jesus just kept on doing what God showed him to do. So that's what we need to do, is be right on target. All through his human life, Jesus trusted the Father. He wasn't anxious. He left God things with God. Even though he was God, he was, he was living out his life as a man to be our example and to sacrifice and be able to die for us. So he trusted God to do the God stuff while he did the man stuff in his incarnation. Pretty amazing stuff. You know, for a lot of us, we haven't learned enough about trusting him yet. Really, many of us, that would be the way to, to think about it, the way to look at it. And that's what we need to do in this time, is learn to trust him more. The main focus of our passage today is to be ready for Jesus' soon return. If we become distracted, there's a lower possibility that we'll be ready when he comes. Isn't that so? Let's pray about it. Dear Father in heaven, thank you that we can trust you to come to you, to live our life. You can help us so that we don't become distracted, that we are able to focus on spiritual things and then uh, in our life communicate these things, live them out, and then communicate the message you have for others uh, through us. So please use us for that, Lord. Help us to be ready, to be very watchful and very awake. Help us not to become uh, confused because it takes a little bit longer for you to come than we thought it would. You really are letting uh, a lot of rope out for the devil to hang himself and we just have to step out our door or drive across the city to see it. It's not hard to see at all. Help us, Lord, to be right. Help our hearts to be right. Help us to continue to love other people even when they seem to be uh, demon-influenced or to have a totally weird uh, worldview that's inexplicable, that's beyond logic that is totally a self-destructive thing. Please, Lord, be with us. Help us to serve you. Help us to serve you well in these closing hours of Earth's history. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So here's an idea. Sit down today. Make a short list. Make a list. Well, maybe it's a long list. Make a list of things that you do and things that become kind of distracting for you. And sort out through that list. Think of the things that uh, do not build you spiritually and look for ways to remove or reduce those pieces so that at the core of what you're doing, every day you have that spiritual help that God is using uh, in your life to build you up and help you to be a Jesus-following Christian. God be with you today, no matter how strange it is.